done it again. Oops, I... Oh, look at yourself. You think you're good, don't you? And in this video, I'm going to be testing the giant propel versus the wind space up this climb. So stick around for that. So welcome back to the Friday vlog series where today I'm at giant Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. And look, I've recognized that I think I've got a problem because I'm about to buy my fourth new bike. So part two of this video will be what I'm gonna be doing about my bike buying problem, but part number one, I wanted to share with you why I'm buying a giant Propel. And before we get into part number one, I wanted to demonstrate to all the naysayers, all the negativity I get that I'm in bed with the mainstream brands and I get given bikes, etc. Cam is so in bed with all the mainstream brands and let's not even get started on the whole wind space thing. For a dude who can't even fix a flat tire, he's gotta be the biggest fraud on the internet. That I'm actually at a retail store and I'm gonna be buying the Giant Propel at the recommended retail price because they weren't having a bar of my negotiations. So, let's get into it. Probably got the dimensions of that if you need it. Huh? What's that? Oh, you're not here to do the sign writing? No. Oh, no. <laughs> Duke, so can you confirm exactly how much I'm paying for the bike today? Yeah, it's 5299, which Five. is the recommended retail price for the, uh, the, the Propel Pro Advance one. Yeah, okay, and I tried to negotiate with you. Uh, how come you weren't having a bar of that? Availability of stock's really hard at the moment, so it's, it's hard for us to actually be able to play with the price at the moment. So. Speed play pedals is when I weigh the wind space. We have 8.6 kilograms. So I bought this giant Propel Advanced Disc 1 at full recommended retail price. Not because I wanted to, these bikes are just hard to get. I was forced to, and I bought it because of many of you out there. And there are two parts to that equation. Part number one is with people watching my video, supporting my work, it's meant that I've been able to get channel sponsors on board. And by doing that, I can now reinvest more into cool projects on the channel, like this one right here. And that is a good segue into thanking today's video sponsor being Surfshark. Meet old mate. We can't show you old mate's face because he's a little different. What an idiot. This silly ad over here. What's this? An online casino? Get my credit card. As you can see, old mate's internet behavior is erratic, but what you may not be aware of is that old mate's privacy and security is covered using Surfshark's award-winning VPN. However, when old mate first heard about a VPN, he was a little skeptical. What the bloody hell is a VPN? Good question. Surfshark's VPN VPN encrypts your internet traffic and disguises your online identity, making it very difficult for third parties to track your activities online and steal your data. That's bloody magnificent. Thus, you can also be safe on public Wi-Fi's with Surfshark while unlocking the major Netflix country libraries and old mate's favourite Surfshark's protection means that nobody can find where you're connecting from, thus you can find the best deals. Looky what we have here, a hundred bucks less. Check out the link below and enter the promo code CAMNICALS to get your 83% off with three months extra for free when you sign up to the 24 month plan. And the second part of that equation is we wanted to compare the Chinese carbon bike I purchased at the back end of last year being the wind space to a mainstream brand within the same price bracket and pretty much the same geometry or size. As you can see here on Geometry Geeks, there's a few minor discrepancies, but mostly the same. Now it should be noted that the wind space with hyper wheels and the wind space aero handlebar is $3,670 AUD. That's without a group set and all the bits and pieces you need for a bike. So it's fair to say the wind space at a full build would be around the $5,000 AUD mark, which is essentially what we have here, this giant Propel, which comes in at $5,300. And this bike was requested by many channel supporters in the wind space first impressions video I made to be the bike I used to fairly compare against the wind space. So which bike is better? 
the Giant Propel or the Windspace T1500? That is a question I will be answering in future content. However, for this video, as you can see, I'm at the bottom of a little testing ground I use here in Noosa. This is Gindia Drive, a closed road, which is a one and a half kilometer climb at an average gradient of 3.6 a gradient where aero bikes should still have some advantages and a road that is nicely protected from any wind. So for this test right here, I have some Asioma power pedals I will be using on both bikes. So we have a consistent power output and I'll be aiming for a 350 watt average. I'm wearing some of my old man's 1980s borderline pornographic bike shoes for this test too. And I will be doing this climb twice on two bikes at a 350 watt average. So we'll be able to have four test runs to compare which bike is faster up this little ride here. So let's get into it. First test complete on the Giant, now for the wind space. Even the bloody light, let's do this properly. Oh, wait a minute. Test two is complete on the, as you can hear, the wind space, that rear wheel is very noisy. Let's go check out the data. So before we look at the data, if you're getting value out of this video, can you please give it a like? Helps the channel out and I would greatly appreciate it. And look, before we examine the data, I just wanna say that I know this test is not perfect and I know that you know that, but at least it gives us something to look at, a little bit of benchmarking. So let's get into it. And as you can see, firstly, at the top of the screen, these are times completed recently when the wind space had a creaky rear wheel and I completed this test with a set of zip wheels as a comparison. Although it should be noted that these times are on a quark power meter and I'm yet to gauge the discrepancies between the quark and my new Asioma pedals. But where I want to draw your attention to is the data here. And as you can see, the wind space is a clear winner with a five second difference between the two closest runs from a power perspective. And despite the fact I'm a wind space basher, according to my growing internet trolling community, I'm gonna say massive thumbs up to my T1500 for doing a better job than I thought it would over the giant propel for this segment anyway. What's gonna happen in future content when we compare these bikes on different roads, different scenario, scenarios. We'll have to wait and see, but what am I gonna do about my bike buying problem? Let's go talk about it. So what- You always get me when I look shit. You look great. What do you, now you had some interesting things to say about this bike. You reckon it's the best bike that I've ever brought home. Is that right? Even more so than the Venge. Well, the Venge was my favorite. Then yeah. the time machine played played around with that a bit. Yes. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I didn't know it was a giant when I first saw it. What did you think it was? Well, it looked a bit, well, I was gonna say it looked a bit too good for a giant design. <laughs> <laughs> it just, uh, it's not, it's, it's not very it's, typical of them. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, I was expecting it to be really light. Yeah. <laughs> I thought yeah. you were gonna be like, I can pick it up with one finger. It's one of the heaviest bikes you've had in ages. Yes, exactly right. Why? I'm learning there, this category is a bit of a brick category. Right. Yeah. Thanks for your input. Uh, the things we do. Okay, is it on my face? <laughs> so, can I first say, I've been meaning to say this for a while, a mate of mine in Melbourne, not sponsored, I'm not getting paid anything for this, he makes these black hemp t-shirts, which are super comfy. Um, I like wearing black so you can't see the sweat under my armpits for videos, but they are an yeah. awesome quality t-shirt. So, if you're looking for a good quality black hemp t-shirt. I'll provide a link below. So what I've decided to do with my bike buying problem is I'm actually gonna ramp it up. What I've recognized in recent times, particularly with COVID and the impact COVID has had on the bike or cycling industry is for YouTubers like me, trying to get access to demo bikes or any bike for that matter, it's borderline become impossible. Even buying this bike was pretty hard. I had to travel all the way to one of the biggest giant stores in Australia, in Brisbane, to be able to get access to this. So what I've decided to do moving forward, we're relevant when we're working on projects on the channel, when we wanna compare one bike versus the other, i.e. the wind space versus the mainstream bike within the same category being the giant here. I'm just gonna go buy the bike and then I have full access to it for as long as I want. And what I'm gonna do in this instance and moving forward is I will sell the bike secondhand, basically brand new after I've used it for a month or two. Yes, I'm gonna lose a few hundred dollars, maybe a few thousand dollars depending 
on the bike, but if that's what I need to do in order to create good content on the channel where we compare good products, then that's what I'm going to do. I think after I've done this and we've gotten through the factor and some other cycling or bike related content that I've got in the pipeline, I'm gonna try and aim for a trek because I have yet to be able to get my hands on a trek. So I'd be keen to get your thoughts below on what trek that should be and I'll catch you all in the next video.